I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Dickens Ziwa from the Scripture Union of Uganda Head Office. Today, permit me to speak to you about God's love for us as human beings, but also about His ability to handle each and everyone's challenge, irrespective of its magnitude. Shall we read together from the Scriptures, from the Gospel of Luke, Chapter 8, we will read from verse 26. They sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he came out onto the land, Jesus was met by a man from the city who was possessed with demons, and who had not put on any clothing for a long time, and was not living in a house, but in the tombs. Seeing Jesus, the man cried out and fell before him, and said in a loud voice, what business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it had seized him many times, and he was bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard. And yet he would break his bones and be driven by the demon into the desert. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They were imploring him not to command them to go away into the abyss. Now there was a herd of many pigs feeding there on the mountain, and the demons implored him to permit them to enter into the pigs. And he gave them permission, and the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they ran away and reported it in the city and out in the country. The people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, seated at Jesus' feet, clothed, and the man was in his right mind and they became frightened. Verse 36. Those who had seen it reported to them how the man who was demon-possessed had been made well. And all the people of the country of the Gerasenes and the surrounding district asked him to leave them, for they were gripped with great fear, and he got into a boat and returned. But the man from whom the demons had gone out was begging that he might accompany him. But he sent him away, saying, Return to your house, and describe what things God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city the great things Jesus had done for him. Let me put a stop there. We are seeing a scenario in this portion of scripture where Jesus is crossing the Jordan to go to another side of Galilee, where he's meeting a man that had been demon-possessed. He had been bound in chains. He was so powerful because of the demons that nobody could keep him under control. He was always chained, and he the Bible says he lived in the tombs. Those of you who know the tomb, it's a graveyard. So that's where he was always kept. And he always kept crying and making a lot of noise. He was a threat and a fear to the entire community. But Jesus comes, and the moment this man sees him, he begins to shout out to him, Jesus, son of the most high God, what brings you to me? What business do we have? Now, I want to tell you one thing. Demons recognize the Lord God. How about you? Demons recognize Jesus and the power he wields. And they shouted for fear because they knew that Jesus was not an ordinary person. He commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, and the Bible says that because there were many and they would seize this man and bound him, Jesus had to liberate the man and set him free from these demons. But here's the most interesting thing. The Bible says it wasn't just one demon, but it was a legend. In other words, there were many demons. Can you imagine a situation where one person is being infested, is being bound, 
by demons that indeed when Jesus cast them out drove the entire herd of pigs somewhere in the gospel of Mark chapter 5 we are told that actually there were more than 2000 or about 2000 pigs can you imagine the loss this could have brought on the owner of those pigs it must have been a devastating scenario for the owner of the ship or the owner of the pigs I beg your pardon because that was a commercial project 2000 pigs is worth millions of shillings today in Uganda but Jesus did not look at the commercial profit of the owner rather he looked at the one soul that needed to be uh, needed to be saved and set free this demonstrates the love of God for each individual person it doesn't matter Jesus will do everything it takes to save one soul even at the expense of losing I don't know how much capital I don't know how much investment and money for as long as a soul is saved and I imagine the reason why the community had to drive and beg Jesus to go away from their community was because they looked at their individual profiteering. Jesus was becoming a destroyer of profit at the expense of saving souls. They came and saw the man who had been a trouble to the village seated calmly and in his right mind. And they realized, as they had been told, that all the demons had been driven into the herd of pigs. And off into the lake they all went and drowned. Perhaps this is where some of our friends from some faith say, well, we shouldn't eat pigs because they have demons. Those that had demons, all of them drowned and none of them survived. But here's the point. Jesus' desire to set you and me free will take him at all length. And so these people drove him away from their area. But the man who had been set free because he knew the magnitude of the salvation Jesus had brought him, begged that he would go with Jesus. Brother Jesus said this one important thing. Return to your house and tell them what great things God has done for you. You and I, who have known the love of God, have a testimony we need to give out. Do you have a testimony? You need to tell somebody what great things God has done for you. Forget about the things you are going through. Maybe you don't have a job right now, but God has done something great for you. Maybe you are saying, well, my children are all now out of school. We do not know the next thing, all because of the situation we are going through. You have a testimony because that is not the essence of life. The essence of life is that you should live a happy life, a life that is in its fullness. Jesus demands you and me to tell the story of our liberation, to tell the story of the hope that he brought to us. When the people drove Jesus away, verse 40 tells us, and Jesus returned to the people who welcomed him, for they had been waiting for him. He's being driven away from one area. He's going back to another area where people are longing to receive him, where people are willing to to acknowledge him and they are welcoming him. And here is the most important. Among us all the people who welcomed him and were waiting for him was a man named Jairus and he was an official of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and began to implore him to come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. But as he went, the crowds were pressing against him. The Bible tells us, verse 43, we are in Luke chapter 8. And a woman who had hemorrhage for 12 years and could not be healed by anyone came up behind him. He touched the fringe of his cloak and immediately the hemorrhage stopped. And Jesus said, who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing on you. But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I was aware that power had gone out of me. When the woman saw that she had not escaped, notice she came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of the, all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, 
Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the house of the synagogue's official, that is Jairus' uh, house, and said, Your daughter has died. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. But when Jesus heard this, he answered him, Do not be afraid any longer. Only believe, and she will be made well. When Jesus came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the girl's father and mother. Now they were all weeping and lamenting for her, but he said, Stop weeping, for he, she has not died, but only is asleep. And they began laughing at him, knowing that she had died. However, Jesus took her by the hand and called, saying, Child, arise! And her spirit returned, and she got up immediately, and Jesus gave orders for something to be given to her to eat. Her parents were amazed, but he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. Very important aspect, that Jesus is being driven away from an area where he has just liberated a soul, and people are driving him away for fear of losing their businesses. And Jesus does not insist in being there, because he has so many people waiting. Many a time, many of us have rejected Jesus. And we are saying, look, I do not want to get involved in these issues of salvation. You might not want, but there are people who are waiting. And who knows, maybe your uh, rejection of him is an opportunity for somebody. But don't let this opportunity pass you by. Jairus is coming, an official, highly regarded, and he is bringing his trouble to Jesus. And he's saying, teacher, my only daughter is sick. I need you to come and heal her. Now, what is amazing about this portion of scripture is that there are two scenarios. Jairus, highly uh, esteemed official, is reporting a sick daughter. But within the crowd that is pressing against Jesus is a woman whom we are told for 12 years had been suffering a hemorrhage. You can imagine somebody having a blood flow for 12 constant years. But somebody's daughter, who is 12, so for as long as this girl was born, this woman was suffering from a hemorrhage. Two different scenarios. One is loved and the father is seeking for help. Another one is really suffering with nobody to help, but is also saying, I need to have Jesus meet me at that point of need. This is why it is interesting that Jesus meets each one of us at their point of need. So as Jesus is moving towards Jairus' daughter, we are told that the people are pressing against Jesus, but there was one unique and different touch. We are told that this woman decided to just touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And because she knew that this was the only thing that would save her, she touched in faith and she got healed immediately. Doesn't it amaze you? That may be amongst the crowd that were pressing against Jesus. There were many with different problems, but they never got their challenges, their problems solved. Why? Because there was no faith involved in their action. Friend, you need to raise your faith. You need to understand the reason why you are believing on God. Number two, when Jesus recognizes that power has gone out of him, he is asking the disciples, who has touched me? And the disciples are saying, come on, Jesus. This is obvious. So many people are pressing in against you and you ask such a question. But Jesus knew this was not just an ordinary touch. How I pray that Jesus will help you not to have just an ordinary touch, not to just be like any other person in the congregation, but to go there for a purpose and touch him because you want him to touch that aspect of your life. Now, we are told that the woman came out and made her story, made her testimony visible, and she told Jesus everything. Now, I will tell you, this must have been a very humiliating thing. First and foremost, within the Jewish culture, that would have rendered Jesus unpure because the woman was unpure. And by her touching or even going in the crowd, she was making every other person unpure. But Jesus' power is sufficient to clean even the dirtiest, even the most rugged amongst us, because he is God. And so after Jesus had listened from the woman, the Bible says that, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And that is in verse 48. 
Are you just any other person or are you a daughter before God? Jairus had come to seek help for his daughter. But here was somebody who was awaiting to receive the most amazing reception for God to say, Daughter, go in peace. Your faith has healed you. May God receive you and say, Son, daughter, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. We need to be recognized by God Almighty as his own children. As I come to the end, when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, the Bible says she came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of all people what had been previously a secret to her, what had been previously something she confided in nobody, she was now at liberty to speak it for the joy that had come because the Lord had made her well again. Hallelujah. Then lastly, Jairus is probably in his mind saying, this woman, you delayed the master. If you had not done this, my daughter would still be alive. Because as Jesus is still engaging this woman and is talking, and then in verse 49, we are told officials, uh, the servants from Jairus' house came. And they are saying, trouble not the master, for your daughter is dead. And you can imagine the fury, the anger, and all the emotions that should have been going through Jairus. And he's saying, if it hadn't been for this woman, the Lord would have arrived in peace. But Jesus, he knows each and every one of our needs. He eaves drops and he gets to understand what exactly information that is coming to Jairus is about. He tells Jairus a very encouraging statement. Do not be afraid any longer. Only believe and she will be made well. What comforting words. Do not be afraid any longer. Only believe. Only believe all things are possible and the Lord will do it for you. So the Bible tells us Jesus proceeded with Simon Peter, with John and James. Among us all the crowd and then only took Jairus and the mother of the daughter. And then they went to the room where the girl was. Meeting the people who were all weeping and crying and they're saying, no, she's dead and not talking all the good they could remember. Jesus tells them, no, she is not dead. She's only sleeping. Because they did not know the power of the person that was speaking, they simply laughed at, at him. And Jesus takes a step. He goes in and rises this girl and her spirit, we are told, came back to her. Now, to amaze these people, to tell them that it's only the living that eat. After she had risen, the first thing Jesus asked that be done for her was give her something to eat. Now, if you're not able to eat, you are as good as dead. But if you suffer hunger, if you have appetite for food, you are living. And there's still hope for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Because Jesus came to set the captives free. Jesus came to liberate. Whatever is dead in your life, whatever has gone wrong in your life, only believe. Put it before the Father, believing that he is able. What he did yesterday, he will do today and he will continue to do. Because he is the beginning and the end the Alpha and the Omega. Today I want you, friend, to reflect upon that which has persisted in your life, that which you are struggling with. No matter how big that problem is, there is a God who is bigger than the problem. Do not elevate your problem beyond your faith. Rather, elevate your God and your faith beyond your problem and you see deliverance. Jesus healed Jairus' daughter. Jesus healed the woman with a hemorrhage. Jesus was able to set free the man who had been bound and by demons and was demon possessed and Jesus restored them. This is what I want to tell you. Jesus is willing to receive anyone who comes to him with a cry and a plea for help and is willing. May God bless you as you make your requests known unto him and he will save you. May God bless you. Have a blessed day and a blessed time. I remain yours in Christ Jesus. Dickens was God bless you.